And I love him because he's like, she's not really seeing anybody because she's like as fuckable as a hedgehog, basically. She might be really pretty. <laughs> she's a but really like, pretty she's but got, really prickly blue stocking she's got porcupine. The sex appeal of a hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. And oh, Dorian does not like that. He hates it. Nobody else gets to neg her. Dude, you just to her face. <laughs> you called her unattractive and like an under the desk slut. My friend, <laughs> not under the desk slot. <laughs> like that's exactly. He if they had the terminology, he may as well he have did. said that. You're right. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm Melody Carlisle, and I'm Sabrina Bradley, and this is Heaving Bosoms. This is the podcast where best friends recap romance novels and other kissing media that makes us swoon, snark, and refills our cups. Whether you've read the book or are coming in blind, we'll lay bare every delicious scene and revel in the tropes and subgenres that make romance amazing. All right, listener, strap in and strap on. Headphones are highly recommended. We're cooking with gas already. <laughs> we are, listener. You have no idea what has led to this. It's cool. It's fine. Everything's fine. All We're cylinders. doing great over here. Um, yeah. Uh, so, Mel, yeah. I do have a question for you. Tell me everything. How's life been as a plant thief? No! <laughs> How dare you tell them about my criminal activity? I told you. I told you when we talked on the phone that I was going to be bringing this up. Ooh, and it still came out of left field for me. Why is that? It did. I was like, when you were like, I was like, yeah, I banter, and you were like, oh, what kind of what what banter do you have? And I was like, Mm -hmm. best buckle up, Melody. You know what, life. Life as a plant thief is great. Listener, I had to have an emergency crown situation done. And everybody knows that as a frugal gardener, as the frugal gardener that I am, who doesn't mind waiting many a season for something to mature, I have a pair of clippers in my purse at all times. Oh, my God. You did not tell me that. (laughs) So that I can take just teensy little cuttings off of things, you know, nothing invasive, nothing terrible. However, I have maybe escalated. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Mm -hmm. I've maybe begun to escalate because after my crown situation, I was like, everything hurts. It's fine. And then on the way home... I was like, I deserve something nice. And my my first thought is always food. You know, my first mm-hmm. thought is always like ice cream or something like that. I was like just going to say ice cream. Mm-hmm. But then I did out of the corner of my little eyeball, <laughs> I saw a tiny tuft that looked very familiar. And I was very excited about it. And so I did a scourge and I, you know, did the wheel over and Wait, I got you were this. <laughs> in your car when you yes! realized this? <laughs> Oh, my God. Listener, these are all details that I did not get on our phone call. (laughs) And so I pulled over and I was like, oh, my God, it's free range yarrow. I have been looking (laughs) for yarrow. (laughs) None of my local nurseries have had any native yarrow in there. And I got some some white yarrow seeds. Okay, and so I am also growing some from seed. But, listener, there was just, like, free-range yarrow, and there was a bunch of it, okay? 
And so coincidentally, I don't know how this happened. I did happen to have a pot and a trowel in my car. Somehow with me. That is the <laughs> least shocking thing that you have ever told me. I don't even remember why I had them in there. You just had them in there for the <laughs> on the off, on the off chance, chance that one day you would be traversing the city. Yeah. And find and some see... free range Yarrow. <laughs> Yeah. And so I pulled over. I went to that parking lot and it was like one of those little median things in between two buildings, you know? I can so it's not really believe anybody's <laughs> that you recognize this in motion. Yes, I was going at least 35 miles per hour. And there was a place that's like not landscaped. You know what I mean? It's not like it wasn't it, it was a place that had been neglected. Listen to for her a while. validate okay. herself, I'm, listener justifying my actions in a way Listen. that might sound defensive, okay? But I'm not at all defensive. I mean, to right? be fair, I did come in to recording and said, how has life been treating you as a plant thief? So yeah. I feel like I feel like it's valid for yeah, you to thank be you. a little defensive. I agree. Yeah, same here. I think so, too. So anyway, I got out of my car and I just got a couple of little divisions. OK, like I just I didn't take one of the whole things and I didn't take I probably took like one thirty second of the amount of yarrow that was there and that I left there. Thank you very much. And yeah, now you left it I've there got, for the other 31 plant thieves in your city. Maybe. Listen, if you are in my city and you are a plant thief and you want to team up, let a bitch know. Heaving bosoms podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> oh my God. No. Okay, let's start Whoever a ring. is listening, we are not. <laughs> Who's going to be the money launderer? <laughs> no, Mel? no, no. He can't. Not me. <laughs> then you can't are have you a thief a math ring. Plant thief. Are you a plant thief who loves a math and maybe a tax code, question mark? I feel like it's less math and more something else. I'm not really Probably. sure what it takes to be a good money launderer, but mm -mm. I don't think a math degree is it. Because I have a math degree and I mm. still barely understand maybe it. Maybe more of an accounting degree, you know? Oh, maybe one of yeah. Those, you know? I bet an accountant could have do it. Have you worked at H&R Block ever? <laughs> a listener who likes to steal plants? <laughs> I don't even know oh my why God, we this would is need to launder money. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> to but fund I like it. shipping plants to people? I don't know. Oh, yeah, so I got some free-range yarrow, and it was amazing. And I'm also <laughs> propagating some panicle hydrangea that I got a cutting off of with permission from the business owner. Thank you very much. Oh, man, it's just great. And I started planting my seedlings and, like, the garden I just wonder what that business owner begun. was thinking you know, like just this <laughs> slightly unhinged lady walking in. Hey, hey, you have a really pretty hey, plant out there. Oh, Can I, I have some your, of your plant? I love your hydrangea. And just like, <laughs> yeah. Keep the crazy Please lady leave. happy. <laughs> <laughs> just take some and go. Yeah. You want to know who would not be very supportive? I don't think of my very justifiable and not at all criminal horticultural actions. Is it the main character in this book? Yeah, it's the main character in this book. She mm -hmm. is a Scotland Yard through and through until she's not, though. I will mm -hmm. say that about her. Yeah, she does have a little bit of revenge on the brain. Yeah, she's so yeah, she gets it done when she needs to. Listener, we are doing The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne. Yeah, I'm going to try and keep my shit to myself a little bit because I am a <laughs> Kerrigan Byrne fan girl. <laughs> She's read I, everything Karen took has ever it took, written. <laughs> it's true. So we read this for my online book club, which is just so delightful. And we always mm -hmm. get to meet the author at the end of the month. And it's wonderful, right? So I started this book because I knew that we were actually doing the last book in a spinoff series for this series. Oh, my God. And I found out it was a spinoff series, and I was like, well, obviously I have to read that first, too. So no. I got the audiobook, so I could kind of listen in the background to The Highwayman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good and audiobook. It took, me, it took me three months to get through it. I just, I Which guess I wasn't... Which my mind. Wow. I guess I just wasn't in the mood for an audiobook. Yeah. But it took me a long time to get through it, and then I decided to eyeball read the last, like, 50 pages of it. And then I proceeded to read... That's why your mind was blown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... 
Yeah. By the way, listener, the first time I read this book, I didn't Sherlock Holmes a th- single thing in it. <laughs> period. Like I had no idea. Any everything that was coming, I was yeah. like, "What? Whoa! No way! Oh my god!" <laughs> but yeah, I did eyeball read those last fifty pages, and then I did proceed to read the rest of this series, the Victorian Rebel series, and the Good Girl series in like nine days. Incredible! Um, wow. So I'm that's what happened. And yeah, then I, I did- really enjoyed this book. I really loved it. Also, I was on my period this week, and so it did make me cry, like, I oh, don't yeah. know, nine times. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of loyalty ah, between mm-hmm. all of these people just, like, mm-hmm. hits me right in this all is, of my heart parts. Listener, if you're looking for a found family book, oh this my God. is it. Wow. This is it. This is found family to the extreme and done so well. So how, what do you think of Morley? As a character, before we really jump into things. Oh, I like a Morley. I want him mm-hmm. to break bad, though. So, do you want a spoiler? Yeah, I he do. He does get a book. Fuck yeah. Yeah. And it's wonderful. It's incredible. Excellent. Yeah, he seems fine, you know? Oh, he's fantastic. <laughs> he's just not right for her, fairly. So, we open up in this book with oh my God, some with little children. wee babies. They're orphans. They're they in an orphanage. Mm-hmm. And this little 10-year-old boy is sad and crying outside of the orphanage. And his palms are all bloody. Because he got whooped on his palms Ouch by down. sister... Who cares? Sister, go fuck yourself. You sister know Maggot. I, mean? I know it yes. starts with an M. Love it. Sister Maggot. Um, I dig it. She's terrible. And he did try and take a little bit of extra bread. And so she did whip the shit out of his hands. But he's hungry. They don't feed them enough. Uh-huh. And so she, he's crying outside. And then this little girl comes up and goes, why are you crying? And he, he says, says, get out of here. Away. I'm not crying. I don't cry. I'm a big, tough man. Because, like, She's what like, else would a 10-year-old boy do? Yeah. And so she scampers away and he's like, good, good. She's out of here. But then he's all sad. He's like, I don't know why I was so mean to her when she's Mm -hmm. the first person to ever touch me in a way that wasn't meant to hurt me, which like killed me. Yeah. (laughs) Second time around. First time around. All times around, really. Uh Uh-huh. But then she comes scampering back up with water and like cleansing solution and and bandages. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, I'm going to doctor up your hands because my dad was a doctor in the Crimean War. And he's like, but you're not a doctor. And she's like, I'm the best you've got right now, bud. Oh, wait. (gasps) Sabrina. What? I'm so sorry. We have to take a quick pause because we need to shout out some incredible patrons. I'm so glad you remembered. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Hello. Well, patrons, we're here to doctor up your metaphorical palms that's what we're gonna do yeah because you've been doctoring up our metaphorical bank account (laughs) (laughs) i don't think it's metaphorical (laughs) no it's not metaphorical (laughs) no because you've been supporting the show so incredibly so we're gonna shout out some new patrons and then a few long time patrons Mm -hmm. so welcome hey and thanks to brigitte c and patty vck to Kanchi S and Anja, Melissa L and Tess, to Lauren S and Jenna J, Ashley P and Liz D, and then Barbie H and Sylvia P. Oh my God! Thank you, Thank so you. much for supporting us on Patreon. It's we so, super so appreciate nice. it. Yeah, yeah, you make the show possible. Frankly, yes. 10,000%. Yeah. yeah. And that show is one where we cry at little boys with bloody hands. That's the one. Listener, to be clear, this is a Sebastian book. Listener. Oof. This is a sad, Ugh. broken boy book. No, this is like this is like a sad, tortured, tormented, like it's systemically bad. abused, you know, bad, bad but, stuff. But to boil it all level. down, he's just a really serious Sebastian. Right, like I mean, the he's saddest, maybe the most serious the Sebastian brokenest. we've ever met. You know what I mean? Really? Maybe I don't know. I don't remember any of our other Sebastians suffering childhood. Our word trigger warning. Oh God, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> 
like that's not great <laughs> you know okay you're right you're right you know what you're right this is the saddest brokenest imagine yeah. we've ever had on the pod I don't like it <laughs> yeah. so listen they end up being friends they decide to be friends and it's very very cute because they've never really had a friend before Neither of them. And from get-go, he's like, you shouldn't care for me. I'm a little demon. And she's like, well, I'm not, but I'm going to take care of you. And he starts calling her Fairy Lee Mm -hmm. instead of Farah Lee. And he's her fairy. And then we have this, like... She's his fairy. Yeah. We have this, uh, what's it called? Where it, like, zippy zaps montage. Yeah, we've got a friendship montage. A childhood friendship montage. And it's so cute. Like For two years... Yeah, she teaches him to read, and it's like they're just so wonderful. And then at the end of this, he asks her to marry him because he finds out that she is betrothed already. She's not even 10 at this point. To Sir Warrington. Yeah, to Sir Literally Warrington. Literally the scum on the bottom of your shoe, but Absolutely. worse. Absolutely, yeah. He's a, he is a true capital V villain, cannot be redeemed, is not sexy. And he's like, well, what will save you from being married to that man? And she says, I think the only thing that would save me is being married to somebody else. And so he says, well, fairy, will you marry me? And she's like, what? We can't do that. And he's like, yeah, we absolutely can. Come to the church and I'll do a hand fasting on us. Yeah. And like the cutest part is he's like, I want to be a pirate. And she's like, but you'll be gone for so long. And he's like, Mm -hmm. well, then I'll be a highwayman because that's like a land pirate. And she's like, oh, that sounds incredible. And he's like, will you be a highwayman's wife? And she's like, yes. I think that sounds like the best thing in the whole wide world. Of course I will. And then he says, and will you love me, fairy? And she's like, yes, of course I will love you. She says, will you love me? And he says, I will. Oh, Sabrina has the quote. He says, I'll try, fairy, but I have not done it before. I'll teach you that as well, she promised, right after I teach you to read. Love is quite like reading, I expect. Once you know how, you can't ever imagine not doing it. Dugan only nodded because his throat was burning. He put his arm around his very own fairy, reveling in the fact that he finally had something good that no one could take away from him. Oh, except they can. So, Mel, I have to tell you something. This being a reread yeah. was rough. <laughs> this whole book was rough. Why? Because I knew everything that was coming. And I was like, this is going to be so dark and fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Well, listen, he takes her to the Highlands Church that's nearby, and he does a hand fasting on them. And he says, like, I think it's even in Gaelic, like, you are Mm -hmm. blood of my blood and bone of my bone. And she repeats it back to him. And then they seal it with a very, very chaste kiss, like a tiny little little kid kiss. Mm -hmm. And both of them are, like, kind of shaking over it. And it's super cute. And now they're married. And then the next night, he's asleep, and she crawls into bed with him. And he's like, oh, my gosh, fairy, what's the matter? And she says, Dugan, I'm sorry, Dugan. I just needed to feel safe, and I feel safe with you. And she tells him that she was almost molested by a pari- a priest. Yeah. A priest, apparently. A pervert priest. Is how my brain wanted. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she managed to, like, hit him and run away, and she ran immediately to Dugan. And he was like, oh, my gosh. Well, because, like, of course she's going to run to her little husband. And, yeah, her husband and best friend and, like, only only support that each of them have had for the past, like, two years or something ridiculous. And so he's like, okay, we're going. Like, put on these pants of mine and we're going to run away and we're going to get away from here because that's the only way I'll be able to protect you from this incredibly powerful adult. Mm -hmm. And as they're getting everything out of the larder, they're like trying to take a few, you know, provisions so they can leave on foot. And it's cold. And then somebody grabs her, meaty hand grabs her. And I'm pretty sure it's that it's that nun sister maggot. maggot sister maggot yeah and then the priest is there they have some crazy stuff happens duke and whips a knife out because he was going to protect her and he does stab the hell out of that priest yeah because he's trying to take her and so now he has to go to prison for murder 
and at he's 12 13. years old. Yeah, he's, he, yeah. So then we zippy zap 17 years. Chapter two, 17 mm-hmm. years later. What? So, I said, hello, friends. <laughs> <laughs> what did you what? think was going to happen? I don't know. Were we going to follow them as children? No. I mean, I was maybe thinking it would be like a five year. I don't know. 17 is so So, long. Well, you learn why it was 17 years because it was necessary. So we zippy zap and we are with Farrah Lee and Mm -hmm. she lives in the Bohemian area area of London. Uh, She's got this crushy old landlord that mm-hmm. she hangs out with and she hangs out with all these artists and authors and all of these things and she lives above this coffee shop and honestly to be a like widow a at 27 who can just do whatever she wants because she's on the shelf in mm-hmm. this artist's area of london frankly like god damn dream yeah. Count me she in. She works at Scotland Yard. Mm-hmm. She's a widow. And so she gets to be like a blue stocking and a cool ass chick. And she doesn't have to like have a chaperone to go to places or whatever. And she really likes her life. Like she enjoys mm-hmm. it now. And so for her ho- entire life after that, she's gone by Farrelly McKenzie because that because was Dugan's was last Dugan name. McKenzie. Yeah. And when she says that she's a widow, she's talking about him. She's and and at this point in the book, I wasn't sure. You know what I mean? Like 17 uh-huh. years later, at 27, she could have been married again and widowed mm-hmm. for natural causes, you know, without a blink, frankly, from me or anybody else. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't sure at this point still. But she's a widow. And she walks into Scotland Yard oh, and there's, there's like a, a big commotion. Yeah, big old commotion. And they're like, Captain Morley, Chief Inspector Morley needs you with your your note-taking pad down in the dungeon, basically. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> like, the reason there's a hullabaloo is that Dorian Blackwell, the black heart of Ben Moore, has been captured. Mm-hmm. And we learn his history, at least as far as Scotland Yard is aware of it. and. Yes. Basically, he came out of nowhere like a decade ago and slowly just took over the seedy underbelly of London and then yeah. started taking over everything bigger and Else? greater than that. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. just he, he like just didn't <laughs> stop. He's like, well, this could, let's just take it all. This is mine. I'm the leader. And yeah. like, well, and, and one of the ways that he did that is like people would notice that there was one fairly noteworthy criminal in like a, a captain position in whatever organization. And that guy would disappear and then be replaced <laughs> by somebody that was loyal to Blackwell. So I was having a moment reading this book, and I have this every time I read a historical yeah. where somebody's mm-hmm. a villain. I'm mm-hmm. like, God, it was just so easy back then, you know? Right. Like, it was just so easy. Man, you could do any murder, frankly. You could just and, like, disappear a person and insert somebody into their place. Yeah. And they're all of the little minions are just like, okay, Mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. So now he's like richer than the king. Okay. He's got lands all over the world. More land holdings. He's, he is a king. Okay. He also regularly donates to charities that benefit children and he sponsors the middle class and like careers of performers and artists and Mm -hmm. opera singers. And like, he is known as Robin Hood. Yeah. They consider him to be like a Robin Hood kind of Mm -hmm. figure, which you be still my beating heart. Well, and then it's noted that he would have been left alone because everything that he did is technically legal. Technically legal. Pretty okay. But then police chiefs and important people. A couple and of like recently prison guards. A, a judicial fancy judge Somebody guy. Or other. Yeah. yeah. And of course they're like, well, obviously it's Dory and Blackwell's fault. Yeah, but they've got no like, fucking proof. They got no proof mm-hmm. whatsoever. Okay. They've Except got now, nothing on him. He's been arrested. And she yeah. walks into that little dungeon and he's already bloodied up because Sir Morley is pissed. Because her direct boss, who allegedly doesn't usually do 
a, a scuff them up, you know, with prisoners doesn't usually bloody them at all. I don't yeah, right? like just. I don't know that I <laughs> just based on how we see Morley in this book. I'm like, mm, no, I don't know. Maybe you that. just never saw it, you know? Yeah. Vera? <laughs> Anyway, so she goes in and she is supposed to be taking notes on this interrogation. And Blackwell looks at her and he says, Chief Inspector Morley, more brutal men than you have tried to get my secrets and so have more beautiful women than her. And I was like, I? How dare you, sir? I was very mad. <laughs> at that comment. You were already on Ferris' side. You're like, this yes. is the most beautiful lass in all of the land. How dare you? Don't neg Farah. Okay. No. That's what he was doing. He negged he the was. fuck out of her. Well, he yeah. was doing it to get a fire lit under Sir Morley's ass. Yeah, because everybody, the rumors are that they've been spending more and more evening time together and he has been escorting her more and more to things like the theater. And Mm -hmm. other places, probably a botanical garden if they have any taste. Mm -hmm. And so... Have you met Sir Morley? I mean... Of course he's taken her to a botanical garden. Are you serious? Most definitely. Okay, so then he's like trying to figure out what's going on. And we get a lot of this backstory about the, you know, judicial officials that are disappearing and all the business within this conversation. Mm -hmm. And at another point... He's like, oh, yeah, how much time does your beautiful sec- secretary spend on her knees below your desk <laughs> with your bleep in her? And then he, like, gets smacked because, of co- because good job, Chief Inspector Morley. He should get whacked right in the mouth for that. Dude, Dorian is really doing the most in this scene. He is We're such truly. a fucking asshole. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. He, so anyway, Morley ends Morley up ordering point, her... Out of the room. He's He's like, like, get out of here. Let me handle this. You don't need to see this. He does. And now we have Zippy Zapped and it is three days later and we are seeing Dorian and he's talking to his inside man at Scotland Yard. Yeah. And that's who helped get him free. We find out that he was arrested. And also get him arrested. (laughs) Intentionally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he was intentionally arrested. And Mm -hmm. then he is talking to McTavish, who's the inside man. And McTavish is like, why do you care? Well, so Blackwell asks him, what do you know about that lady clerk? And Mm -hmm. McTavish is like, please don't do anything to her. She's just a sweet lass. Like, and I, I love him because he's like, he's like, I mean, she's not really seeing anybody because she's like as fuckable as a hedgehog. Basically. She might be really pretty. <laughs> she's a really like, pretty, but got, really prickly blue stocking she's got porcupine. She's sex appeal of a hedgehog. <laughs> yeah. And oh, Dorian does not like that. He hates it. Nobody else gets to neg her. Dude, you just do her face. <laughs> You called her unattractive and like an under the desk slut. My friend. <laughs> an under the desk slut. <laughs> like, that's exactly. He if they had the terminology, he may as well he have did. said that. You're right. So then he <laughs> looks McTavish dead in the face and he's like, I'm not going to do anything to her. But he also is like, Having scruples is a dangerous thing for men like Mm. you to have. If I can't trust your greed, then I can't trust anything about you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, shit. But McTavish, like, precious baby. He's being a sweetie. He he takes that in hand and keeps going. He's like, but she's a really nice lady. Like, please don't hurt her. Yeah. Please don't do anything. And they have this back and forth about getting a black heart like Blackwell's. Mm-hmm. And yeah, go ahead. Do you have the quote? Yeah. So McTavish is worried about all of these things and yeah. Blackwell looks at him and he's like, that's where you're wrong, Inspector. Every man is capable of a heart such as mine. They just need to be given the right incentive. And McTavish says, okay, well, I'm not looking for any of those kind of incentives Is that if that's what you're thinking. And he Honestly, says, I'll tell you a secret, McTavish. I didn't want those incentives either. And that's the first time that you look at Blackwell <laughs> and cry. <laughs> like, what's happened to you, bud? And no, then you find I out know. what's happened to him. And, and you're it, like, 
is oh fuck terrible it's so bad is what it is yeah so farah has shown back up at scotland yard because she's going for a night out on the town with sir morley mm-hmm. she's like friends with all of the pro- like sex workers down at the docks the dock walkers yeah. and she knows all of these people and that's like part of the reason that she has so safe on the streets of london is she knows all of the criminals she sees them when they come in they know exactly who she is they know that she's not the one arresting them and they know that if she possibly can she will do anything she can to help you know Mm -hmm. and so in that vein we meet Gemma. she is a um, sex worker who has a terrible terrible trafficker He's incredibly brutal. Druthers. He beats her up all the time. Druther, druthers, yeah. And so Farah promises her that when she is released from this this round night. of being arrested. Yeah, because um, Gemma's like, thank God, I'm going to have a night of like where I'm on my back and I get to sleep. And it's like, I Gemma, know. no. I know. Well, because Farah saved her at one point. Or, like, Mm -hmm. got her out of it, but then she ended up just stuck right back into it, which is a great example of how this is the systemic kind of shit. Absolutely. Well, and especially during this period in Whitechapel specifically, Mm -hmm. like, one of the only ways that a lot of poor women could get shelter at night is to be a sex worker, you know, if they possibly could. So anyway, she's like, I'm going to figure out a way to get you away from Druthers And that's why I'm going to meet you tomorrow morning. I'm going to meet you and we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Then she goes out on her night on the town with Morley and Mm -hmm. it's fine. It is a perfectly reasonable, Mm -hmm. friendly date. We also find out through her inner monologue kind of talking about things that she got the job at Scotland Yard so she could get information in the very, very beginning. Or she yeah. used her position to get information about what happened, you know, a decade ago. We don't know what happened a decade ago. We but don't. we know that something happened. Mm-hmm. And it's it's real sad. I don't know why I'm acting so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an intrigue at the very least. It is. <laughs> so he takes her, you know, he, he takes her to the stairs that go up to her rooms. And he's the kind of guy that talks about having a particular... A line of questioning for her. I mean, mm-hmm. I wanted to speak with you about a particular matter, he says. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't know what that means. She's like, I know exactly where this is going. Please yeah. don't do it. And yeah, please don't. And so he's like, did you have a good time with me tonight, Farah? And she's like, yeah, I find that I, I like your company more than a lot of people's. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, yeah, I figured we could really run a good society home together. And you're a person that I would rather spend my nights with than anybody else I can really think of at the moment. So how romantic. <laughs> just wondering. <laughs> would you like to would you like to enter into a relationship, like a partnership on paper yeah. with me? I mean, basically, that's what a marriage is. <laughs> yeah. And she tells him, I don't think I'd be a dutiful wife. I am too set in my ways. I like my freedom and all of these things. And he says, was your first marriage so awful? And she says, no, it was just tragically short, Mm -hmm. which is depressing Mm -hmm. as hell. And then they kiss and it's fine. But she can't stop thinking about that sexy Dorian Blackwell. How would he kiss? I bet it would be very compelling. She's mm-hmm. thinking to herself, oh, mm-hmm. because when she walked in, this was one of my favorite lines. When she walked into the interrogation, she noticed that the two men had very similar like initial flashes on their faces. And it was like one of the layers was hunger mm-hmm. <laughs> on both of their faces. Well, and we didn't describe Blackwell because he's a striking man. Okay? Oh, yes, please. So please. his features were those of cruel brutality. His one good eye had that amber quality that had belonged to the Jaguar because she did talk about um, oh. this uh, <laughs> big predator. An apex, a- apex predator. That she saw at the zoo one time or like a circus or some kind of whatever they call it back and in the how they go preternaturally still uh-huh. and they see some prey 
The flickering lamplight made it glow gold against his burnished skin. Yeah. It was his other eye, though, that arrested her attention, for starting above the brow and ending at the bridge of a bladed nose was a jagged, angry scar, interrupted by an eye leached of every pigment but blue by whatever had caused the wound. And indeed, he stared at her like a predator recognizing his preferred meal and mm-hmm. lying in wait to pounce until she haplessly wandered into his vicinity. <sighs> Yep, yeah, that's exactly it. <laughs> Listener, I wish you could have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's the predator. Everyone knows. Like, yeah. Dorian goes someplace and it's like, oh, yeah, that that's the apex here. Like, Oh, yeah, we, we don't fucks with him. That's king of the jungle. So, so anyway, they have their little smooch. Yeah, and she's like, let me think about it because these things shouldn't be decided quickly. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, well, give me some... Can you give me some hope? And she's like, okay, bye. <laughs> See, <laughs> That's exactly you later. It. Bye. <laughs> he and says, will she... you come to church with me tomorrow? Oh my God. Talk about the least sexy <laughs> thing you can possibly ask me. And she is in full boudoir mode. She's like, maybe I won't be untouched at like before I'm 30. That would be mm-hmm. incredible. She's like, I she's like, I'll dick you, I'll get dicked down by we you, but I don't want to go talk about the Lord with you. Exactly. And so she's like, I don't really Mm -hmm. like church very much, but come around for tea. And he's Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And then she walks into her little loft, her little, what's it called? Her little landing? Her little flat. Yep, that's it. Her little flat. And her life changes forever because she gets grabbed. Dorian is standing (laughs) in her fucking living room and he looks her dead in the face and says, I hope you enjoyed that kiss. It'll be your last. And then blackout. <laughs> like, what the fuck, Dorian? Could you be possibly any more ominous and terrifying? Sinister. Sinister. So she wakes up and she can't on she has train. no idea where she is until yeah. she registers they're on a train and she can hear Dorian and somebody who we don't know yet named Murdoch talking and they're just having this little conversation and she doesn't really understand what they're saying but one of the one thing that she does get is that they're about to drug her again yeah. um, so that she's quiet for the rest of the journey and so she's the like the rest what? of the journey doesn't bother her mm-hmm. and then she finally comes to again and dorian doses her again and he's uh-huh. like i never forget dorian Jesus Christ, dude, just give her the drugs. Don't be a fucking oh, lunatic yeah, about it. Murtaugh is like, like, you should dose her again. And he's like, like, I just don't want you to forget. And he's like, I never forget. <laughs> One of the things, like a couple of the different phrases that she hears is like Murtaugh asks him if he's going to tell her. And then Dorian cuts him off. And he's like, no, never. And then another time, he's like, well, do you think she's going to give you what you want? And he says, I won't give her a choice. <laughs> it's like all very sinister. And then, so fucking ominous. <laughs> and then she wakes up in a castle in the Highlands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. With Dorian watching her sleep, he's just posted up by the fireplace staring at her. And she doesn't realize oh. it until she gets out of bed and walks for a second. And then she's like, oh, my God, there's a man there. <laughs> like, what the fuck, Dorian? So I don't that remember happens. this part. I thought oh. it was Murtaugh. No, but Murtaugh so wakes Dorian's her up in the morning. Yeah, standing there, and she's like, "I'll have Scotland Yard after you." And he's like, "Try, I could make it so that you're never found." And she's like, "What the fuck?" Uh huh. She in her mind, and, she's like, "Does that mean alive or dead?" Yeah. And then he <laughs> basically does a proposal. He's like, "We're getting married." Yeah. This is what? all happening. This is happening the night before. He basically is like. Like, no, she's in a bath. No, not yet. He's like, what are you talking about? It's the night before. This is chapter okay. five. Like, it's in the middle of the night mm-hmm. because he's like, you're going to marry me. And she's like, no, I'm not. And he's like, were you going to marry Morley? And she's like, well, no, I'm it's not. No. And he's like, well, you let him kiss you. And she's like, right. Okay. Doesn't mean I'm going to marry him. And then at one point he leans forward in the dark and mm-hmm. you can see this glimpse of pain and longing in his eyes. And he's his like, one eye. His, he's like, his, go she to always s- says, 
go to sleep fairly. You're out of danger tonight. Oh, and then right. she lays down <laughs> and just passes out. And I'm I like, mean. never in a million years. <laughs> never million years would I pass out in that room after that conversation. Honestly, I think I would like panic pass out. You know what I mean? I would like escape. Oh, you'd That faint. would be my version of escaping. You'd be it's like, just like, I, just, I need to be unconscious. Maybe I just go to bed and when I wake up, I'll be back in my flat and I'll maybe, this will be a fucked honestly, up dream. that used to be what I did with my mom when we were in the car. My mom would take the opportunity for me being a captive audience to, like, talk to me or sometimes, like, berate me for whatever was, you know, happening at that time. And then at some point during the ride, she would look over and I would just be asleep against the door because I I just had to escape. (laughs) That... Are you a Sebastian Melody? (laughs) Are you just a sad, broken boy? Everybody has different levels of Sebastianism. You know what I mean? (laughs) Anyway, so yeah, she passes out. And then in the morning, Murtaugh is there. And she's like, whoa, there's a man. And basically, she finds out that he and every other guy in the castle at the moment We're all in Newcastle prison with not only Dorian, but also Dugan. Mm -hmm. And they all know each other and they all know about her because they were in prison with Dugan at Newcastle. And they were all besties as much as you can be besties in that and, like, environment. The reason they know about her is he used to tell them all stories about her to like up their spirits and like and like pass the time yeah and make everybody feel safer and like there was hope and they just they didn't actually for a long time believe that his fairy existed and then they found her and i just yeah. it be really emotional yeah well and one of the so we didn't describe her either but one of the reasons that fairy like really worked as far as a play on Farrah Lee is that she has, like, almost silvery blonde ringlets and, like, you know, she's very pale and she's very beautiful. Yeah, she's, yeah, exactly. So he's like, yeah. And, And she finds out that, like, he tries to tell her that she's safe here. He says that they grabbed her and they kidnapped her because she is in danger. Mm -hmm. But he wants her to know that that danger cannot touch her in that castle with all of these men because all of them would lay down their lives for her. And that is Dorian is at the at the top of that list. The tippy toppiest. Tippity tap top. And she's like, interesting, interesting, interesting. So Murdoch does leave. And then she's like, "Okay, it's time to go. And so yeah, she so gets her police, she gets her little cover up, she puts her mm-hmm. shoes on, and she goes down the stairs, and she's real smart about it, and she gets all the way to the kitchen, and there's nobody there, and mm-hmm. she's like, "It's I'm gonna go. And then she, gets, she stopped. gets grabbed. She does get grabbed by the sweetest, by most gigantic man. And he's so sweet, and he has scars all over his face and And he's been through head. some serious head trauma as a child. Yeah. And he speaks a little bit slowly, but Mm -hmm. she finds out and she realizes that, like, he made the delicious breakfast that she made. Yes. She also decides to name him because he doesn't have a first name. I had a hard time with this. fucked up. I was very mad at her. She named him Frank Mm -hmm. after Frankenstein. She says it's perfect for a Frankenstein. And I was like, Farah, that Farrah? is unkind. That is not generous. That is so like, f- Especially because, like, and I don't know. You know that one of my, like, really soft spots is, like, taking advantage of or making fun of mm-hmm. people with less or different mental capability. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And this moment was tough for me because we find out that he thinks it's like such an honor, you know, because Uh he's heard of like he's heard of her for his whole life. And then we find out that he goes through this horrific trauma, this head trauma injury situation at the prison. And so now she's like almost deified 
to him. Mm -hmm. She's Dugan's fairy. Mm -hmm. And so he thinks it's so beautiful and cool and and such an honor. and, And she's making fun of him. Yeah, and I don't think that she intended it to be that way, but that's definitely how it comes across. I didn't like it. I was very mad at her for a while. Yeah. And it wasn't to the point that I would have DNF'd, Uh huh. but it was borderline for me, Melody, just mm-hmm. because that's one of my, like, cannot handle that's it. That's one of your things. hard limits, yeah. Yeah. Well, so, he, they, she, they're in the kitchen, and she's like, let me out. And he's like, no. And she's mm-hmm. like... Please let me go. And then he says, no, he needs you. Mm hmm. And then he also lets her know that, hey, he's actually waiting for you. He needs to talk to you. Would you like some pastries for the road? And so he does give her the most delicious strawberry pastries and she does meander off. She gets to. But listener, I just need you to know that when he said he needs you, she thinks he means right now in the study But he does not mean that. Those are two separate thoughts out Mm -hmm. of Walters, Frank Walters. The first one is he needs you in his life, in his heart, in his world, period, the end. And the other one is he wants to talk to you right now. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They're not the same thing. (laughs) They're not the same thing. I love how much you love that. (laughs) So she ends up in his study and Dorian shows up and he's like, so I hear you already tried to escape. And she's like, I did not. I was hungry and needed to be fortified before I saw you. And he says, with pastries? And she's like, yes. And then she shoves one straight into her face and just, like, (laughs) chomps on it. Like, this pastry, she is so dehydrated and anxious. And so it's just, like, chewing on tar. On dust. She She can barely swallow it. And then he's like, I'm going to see if that's really true. And so he... He goes to grab it from her hand, mm-hmm. and then he's like, he pulls back. Even though he's wearing gloves, he pulls back, and he's like, please set it on the on the table. So she does, and then, then he picks it up from the table and eats mm-hmm. it. And he's like, oh, yeah, I can see how that would be fortifying. Mm-hmm. It definitely so then, sweetens the moment. <laughs> yeah. So then he tries to figure out what the hell she's been doing mm-hmm. for the past while, because he hasn't been able to find her, and he wanted to. And she says that she didn't realize that he was at Newcastle with Dugan. And he says, yeah, we were at Newcastle together. And, like, I was sort of a right cunt to him at first. Oh, God. He tells the whole fucking story about, like, their history. How, like, he threw a rock at Dugan and Dugan turned around and was like, no! I'm going to whoop you hard. Rock right back at him. And then they became he, besties. Then, well, because then he says that up until that point, he was like the youngest and he was the scrawniest. He was the weakest link, right? And well, then once yeah, they saw Because he's they, 12 years old and sent away for murder. Yeah. And once they saw like the hatred in his eyes when he retaliated against that rock that was thrown, they were like, oh no, this kid is actually scary. Then. Dugan was the only one who could read. And so he could read the lines of like where each prisoner was going. And he grabbed like a a few of the kids that he he wanted to to go into a safer line. And he could read because Farrah taught him. Farrah taught him to. Yeah. So he saved all of their lives. And Dorian was like, to this day, I have no idea why he grabbed me too. But he saved my life that day. And then we became best friends. And then they were like inseparable. And they started being called the Blackheart Brothers. Mm-hmm. He and Dorian, because they looked very much alike. Mm-hmm. Which was uh, maybe my seventh Sherlock Holmes moment up to this point, Sabrina. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't know. Because like, there's so many. When I was rereading it, I was so like, many. ping, 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 <laughs> ping, ping, ping. Like, it was just all the way through the mm-hmm. book. And then, like, I... Yep gaslit myself re-reading this book where I was like, <laughs> it can't actually. That's not actually what. Maybe I forgot. Maybe I'm getting this storyline mixed up somewhere else. <laughs> it's too obvious the second it's time too reading it. It's fucking <laughs> obvious. Sorry, listener. When we chatted, like, just friend chat the last time, yeah. at the very end of the call, we usually try not to talk about the book. Talk about book. having other, you know, talks. But then Sabrina was like, I just have one question for you. Did you know? And I was like, wait, what? Well, duh. <laughs> yeah. You dud me. 
did. <laughs> so anyway, so and we I think find out. we came to the conclusion it was because it took you three months to finish the audio book. Like yes, I wouldn't yeah. have remembered the sign yeah, if I had yeah. broken it up into that long anyway. <laughs> yeah. As well. So turns out Farah. So we find out. This is all going to kind of be a hodgepodge. So we find out that what ha- was happening in Farah's life is she was off working for... Li- so she... When did we learn about the carriage? Is that now? The carriage? When she... Yeah, like how she follows away. him. Mm-hmm. On the train. That's later. After their wedding. Yeah. Right oh, now, okay. we learned that she brought like cheese and crackers and extra food to him every single for day. For seven at- years. At Newcastle, and, and he didn't know it, that was, it was from, from her. her. And so, honestly, I was oh. shocked that he got it. Same. I was about to say he never. I, I was expecting Dorian to say he never got that. Like the guards mm-hmm. kept it. Because why the fuck would they well, give no, it to and him? It turns out that he got the food, but he didn't get the letters that she wrote every None day. Of the notes. Yeah, and so she was actually oh. there. After seven years, seven years of doing this, listener, she yeah. was there the day and she went to take it to them and they were like, oh, he's dead. He died. Dugan's dead. He was and murdered. They didn't tell him that. They though. didn't say that. They just said that he died. He died of like a schmalera or something. Yeah. You know, something. or like a, mm-hmm. a different a whatever England times disease. Yeah. That doesn't spread. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, but that's not schmalera. You know what I mean? Like. Cholera is incredibly communicable. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, oh, I know Oh, that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. How ridiculous <laughs> is that uh, thought? <laughs> because it comes up later. <laughs> <It's> like, yeah, <laughs> two different times. <laughs> because she supposedly dies of cholera, yeah. too, when we yeah. find out. So, <laughs> so she tells it, she basically looks him dead in the face, and she's like, if you're going, if I'm going to believe this story out of your mouth, that you are Dugan's mm-hmm. friend, all of these things. I need you to hold my hand and look me in the eye and tell it to me again. And he's like, I'm not touching you. <laughs> I'm not yeah. touching you. And she no says, touchy. I can't trust anybody that won't even shake my hand. And he decides to be vulnerable with her. He's never told anybody this. During his time in prison, mm-hmm. he has been disinclined to the touch of another. And it's like, oh, Oh, no. Yeah, it's bad. He doesn't want human contact because it hurts terribly no matter what. Yes. That's what he has. That's what he learned in prison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they end up talking more about Dugan and she says that it was her fault. Like she's felt terrible this whole time because if she had just like, you know, just allowed the priest to do what he was going to do. Dugan never would have been in a position to murder him and go to prison. Well, she's like sobbing at this point. Yeah, of course. And Dorian's like, he never, ever thought that. And he would be so upset if you were blaming yourself. And she's just like, I cannot handle this anymore. And she runs out into the fields of Heather. Mm -hmm. And he lets her. Uh, Like, Mm -hmm. Walters goes to go after her, and he stops Walters. And then he's like, oh, let her go, Walters. And he goes, Frank. And he's like, Frank. (gasps) He's like, yeah, that's my name. She named me this morning. And he my heart. Like, of course she did. And then he says, what's the matter with your fairy, Dugan? And Dor- in, in Dorian's mind, he says, <laughs> he says this was a problem he was running into more and more. And then he looks at this poor injured man in his in his beautifully broken brain. And he says, I'm not Dugan. Dugan died, remember? And then this poor gaslit Injured man says, oh, yeah, I can't remember things very well. How did I? (sighs) How did I not know? (laughs) How did I not get it the first time around? (laughs) So anyway, then she goes back up to her rooms later on. And Mm -hmm. Murdoch is like, he's not that scary. He would do anything for you. And she's like, why? Why? And he's like, because you're Dugan's fairy, you know, like you're he tells mm-hmm. her like how significant she is to every single man, even if they had never met her before. And then he runs her a bath and he's got like a screen up and he's in there chatting with her and like telling her about what it was like in Newgate. 
And he gets interrupted when he is saying, I mean to say, I know it does not seem like it now, but you can trust him. The rest of us, we'd lay down our lives for yours. But Blackwell, he'd do that and more. He'd rip the beating heart from his chest. He'd give up his soul if you'd only... <laughs> It is making a rather large and fallacious assumption that I have a heart to give or a soul. <laughs> Black, oh, he's Black in the well. bathroom now. <laughs> oh, oh, no. the bathing area. Oh, and he's like Murdoch. Fuck off. Well, and like get out of here. This is just important to me. Like it's me not no huge. Saying. I was about to so, say this. The the reason she's comfortable bathing in front of Murdoch. And is the that, reason that he let him into her rooms at all is because he's gay. He's he's that's gay. That's why he and went to prison. Because he is... fell in love with the son of an earl. And when they got caught, the earl called him a predator. This is fucking heartbreaking. Absolutely. He was in love. And they were in love. And instead of being outed in place where being gay was illegal badly yes well no and illegal like you yes. you could be sent to newgate prison, prison. or be like executed Home. or whatever yeah he said i was i was preyed upon and mm -hmm. he didn't stand up for him and so murdoch went to newgate prison yeah Terrible. it's pretty fucking awful and the reason it's super important comes later in this yes, book. It, uh -huh. <laughs> because of a certain footman. A little stuttering, adorable oh, baby. What a beautiful fucking soul. So anyway, now Dorian's here and he's like, Murdoch, get out. I've got stuff to discuss with this lady. So I have a question for you. Okay. At this point, Dorian is just looming over her in the bathtub. Mm-hmm. Can you take classes on how to be a sinister asshole? You know? <laughs> like, I feel like this is right out of the playbook, right? Like, looming over her while she's in the bath and mm -hmm. being, like, well, like, being just a naughty man. He's described as a naughty man. Yeah. No, absolutely. And so she's like, you need to get out. This is not okay. And he's like, my castle, my rules, basically. <laughs> And he says, I can give you everything you want in your entire life and imagination, but I won't tell you about it unless you wash. Mm -hmm. So she's like, oh, my God. So she grabs the soap that, that importantly to me, for some reason, it smells, smells like, like lavender? Heather and honey. No, Heather and honey. Where did the lavender come from? Heather is also purple. Hmm. Anyway. Anyway. So... <laughs> He says, I can make you into a countess again. And she's like, I'm not a countess. What are you talking about? I have no idea what you're saying. And he's like, can we please just stop with this? You use your husband's name, but your real name is Farrelly Townsend. And you were the son of the Earl of Schmurgle, who also I just fought in say, Crimea. I am yes. so proud of you for remembering her actual last name. Thank you. Thank you. That is truly incredible. Thank you. I literally thought about it today and I said it to myself multiple times. Wow. Just to make sure it happened. Yeah. I like the, the eyeball look. Yeah. You're <laughs> <laughs> really doing my best. Yeah. So he basically tells her all of her history that he knows of and mostly that there's this long contested fortune and now this woman has come out of nowhere Mm -hmm. And declared that she is the daughter of the Earl of North Rup. North Gate? North, North Hampton? North, North, North Bang. North Bang? North <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> North anyway, Walk. North Walk? Yep, I just looked it up. It's in my notes. That sounds the least probable to me. <laughs> I like North Bang, so, like, it's fine. I <laughs> like North Bang quite a bit, yeah. So she's come out of the woodwork, and she's been like, I've had amnesia for my whole life, except now I don't have amnesia like, anymore. To be fair, I'd read that book. You know, Same. I have read that book. <laughs> Absolutely. But also, but that's she's not what's married to the former steward of the Earl of North Bang. Yeah. And the one who was affianced to Farrah Lee, which is coincidental. Farrah, what was your dad thinking? 
Well, we find out. No, I understand. But why would you betroth your unborn child, practically? Yeah. To, to a, a man person who is 18 your years older? Age? No, he was 18 at that point. How old was her dad? Older? Still. <laughs> Still, I don't know why we're done. These are just yeah. Good. It really doesn't <laughs> semantics, but like this is still like fucked up in a lot of ways. Like, oh, bud, absolutely. Come on, dude. <laughs> like, no. And we fi- at first she thinks it's because like her dad must have been doing something criminal or bad, mm-hmm. and like this fucker had you know dirt on him. Had dirt on him. Yeah, yeah. We find out later it's just because he was big hoodwinked. <laughs> Yeah, it was real sad. So basically, Dorian's like, I want you to come forward as the rightful heir of the town's unfortunate, mm-hmm. and uh, I will help you get that fortune. And she's mm-hmm. like, in exchange for what? And he's like, marrying me. And well, she's like, my favorite part pardon. is that, yeah, my favorite part is like, she's like, it's not even possible. It's especially not possible because a woman can't claim titled whatever unless she's married. And he's like, funny, you should mention that you're going to marry me. Mm-hmm. And she's well, like, she, uh, she's like, that's not. a shitty proposal. And he's like, a proposal requires a question. <laughs> right? <laughs> I did not ask a question. I informed you that you mm-hmm. are marrying me, period, the end. And so they go round and round. And then finally, she's like, you know what? I will accept your terms, but I have one condition. And he says, all right, lay it on me. And she says, I want a family. Like, I didn't <laughs> think it was possible But the one thing that I've always wanted and I thought was just like a pipe dream is a family that I could have that's like I remember. Mm -hmm. I had a really, really, really wonderful childhood until my mom and dad and sister died and I was sent off to that terrible orphanage. I want to create a home that's full of love and joy and kinship. And he's like, hard pass. And then... (laughs) <laughs> this bold bitch stands up fully naked out of her bath and looks him dead in the face. And he is so horny. He's like, he absolutely not. Himself. I mm-hmm. will not. I will never. And he's like, I can't touch you. you. You don't want me to touch you. And she's like, you don't have to touch me as far as I'm aware. You don't have to touch me at all, except with your. <laughs> That's right. She's like, I've met many a doc walker. Seems to me you don't even have to disrobe to get that done. Just just <laughs> whip that willy out, my friend. And he looks at her and he says, you want me to treat you like a common duck walker? And in her brain, she's like, I mean, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I'm really not even mad about I it. Do. <laughs> he says, we're getting married on the morrow. So then we zippy zap. And she and Frank have spent all day cooking food. And it's so cute. Like all of these meals, she has a sweet tooth. So they have all of these desserts. There's all of these things. It's just a table for one with like the most obscene amount of food. Yeah. (laughs) Ma'am. Like Mm -hmm. until recently, weren't you also a not particularly well off clerk at the Scotland Yard? Yeah. She hasn't had this amount of bounty put in front of her. Since she was or like seven. The ability. Yeah. Since yeah. forever. So Dorian shows up and she says, you have the reputation of a hedonist. And he says, <laughs> maybe so, but you have the palate of one. <laughs> and it just made me really happy because there's like eight different entrees. That, like, this is too much oh, yeah. food. It's I was so hungry after this. I know. So they have some fun, cute repartee about like his torture dungeons and Mm -hmm. his harem. Yeah. And there's all all these these rumors about him. And he's like, yeah, none of them are true. Mm -hmm. Basically. Yeah. And then she ends up. Oh, well, more more importantly, more importantly, she's talking about his supposed harem, and she says, but perhaps one of them could have enticed you to do something other than watch. His expression turned serious. You're the only woman I'd even consider betting. Mm-hmm. And I swooned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, so then it's she's going to 
well, married. Importantly. Sorry. Sorry. Please. Hang on. Importantly, she eats a dessert and she gets a little whipped cream on her mouth. Oh, and she And then it she off. swipes it off of her mouth with her finger because she can't t- find her napkin because she yeah. threw it at that cad. That's right. And then she licks it off of her finger and he straight up crunches a wine glass into pieces <laughs> unexpectedly <laughs> and himself and just shatters oh my god i'm not gonna lie this took <laughs> me out of the book again i remember yeah, it yeah, taking yeah. me out of the book the first time too where there's just shards of glass and all of the leftovers and i'm yeah. like what a waste of food who's gonna be able to eat that nobody nobody that's not safe you nobody can eat it you can't Come get all on. the glass out <sighs> frank is the best cook on the island dude i you know, know. I want a Frank. I, can I just have a chef? You know? I love a Frank. Ooh. I wanna, so it's the next morning and yeah. it's marriage times. Murdoch walks her down the aisle. Mm-hmm. It's so sweet. There's no like, there's no music. No, it's there's just no dead nothing. silent in this musty old church that nobody, it's not even the priest of that church. It's from a no. different church because nobody uses this church in this place and she makes a note that she's really glad that this is a christian ceremony and not the ancient one that she and dugan did because yeah. this is different oh my god also the one thing we forgot to tell them about the scene before is that while she's in the bath she says to herself not even to him this is the last thing he would have wanted and dorian says i don't think that's true like mm-hmm. Dugan loved you Dugan loved me. Don't you think he would have wanted us to know each other, to care for each other? And he's like, I promise that I will care for you. And she's like, oh, gosh, yeah, I guess so. And then that's one of the things that finally tips her over the edge, Mm -hmm. including him telling her that he will, in fact, get her pregnant. Mm -hmm. So now we're here. And one of my favorite things is that in between the priest saying, like, do you take this woman to be your wedded wife? In her inner monologue, it says, your blood of my blood and bone of my bone. And so she's sort of stitching these two wedding ceremonies together mm-hmm. in her mind as it's happening. And it's beautiful, Then frankly. they have an incredibly chaste kiss, which is very important because mm-hmm. they kiss. Mm -hmm. and she is the one who initiates and he (laughs) (laughs) that's dorian's reaction (laughs) no that is essentially dorian's reaction (laughs) i'm so sorry that came out of nowhere and i do not have the skills that you do to successfully mute myself wow so anyway no dorian's reaction is he just stands there he doesn't move away first which is super Mm -hmm. important he just like Mm -hmm. stays there and it's wonderful and now it's the wedding night oh she's been anxiously waiting at the bed first she tried first she's like like draw me like one of your French girls. On She's the bed. trying to make herself ready. And then whatever and the then fuck she that means. <laughs> puts up like closes the blinds and turns on some candles. Yeah. And She's like maybe she... the warm light. Mm-hmm. Won't do well, good maybe. Things. <laughs> and then she's like sitting on the bed and then finally she's like god damn it i'm going after him yeah like what the fuck and turns out he has been standing on the other side of that door holding onto the door handle for the last hour what trying to get up the gumption to go inside i do not remember that yeah wow yeah okay he's just standing there just <laughs> waiting maybe it wasn't an hour but it was a long time like <laughs> yeah anyway so they both open the door at the same time and she says where have you been while he says where are you going <laughs> and then he sits down in a chair and he tells her to take off her dress And she says, well, I thought that you would want to do that. And he says, if I had wanted to, I would have ripped it off your body already. Mm -hmm. No, I'm telling you to take off your dress. And she says, oh, that's right. You like to watch. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. And then when she's about to drop her bloomers, he's like, turn around. And she's like, what? Okay. And so she turns around so he can see her ass. Yeah. And then she bends over and slowly wiggles them down. And the entire time he is sitting there, like, 
cutting holes in the fucking armchair arms. He's losing with his, his mind. Because he's so horny. He literally waxes poetic about her mm-hmm. body and specifically her butt for like a solid 10 pages. Yeah. Just talking about how beautiful she is. And then he's like, okay, lay down on the edge of the bed and spread your legs. And she's like, uh, and then she does. And and meanwhile, like, I don't know that I would be capable of this, period. You know what I mean? Like, like I just need listener to know that up until this point, he has basically acted as if she repulses him. You know, like all the messaging she's gotten is, I'm not going to touch you. I can't stand it. I couldn't. Period. I, I don't think so. And she, throughout this book, has taught, she, oh, she's like, I can see the fire behind his eyes and I can I blah, blah, this. I would and, not and be I'm able like, to. Mm-mm. 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 Not this guy. No. And meanwhile, like in this scene specifically, I don't know if you have the quote, but she says something like, seducing. A husband without any of the reassuring kisses or touches or anything else is like an incredibly harrowing experience. This woman, between standing up in the bathtub to be like, are you sure you don't want all of this? And then for the very first time, like she just got her first tingle while using the soap on herself in the bathtub yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to go from very first tingle in her nethers to I'm going to lay splayed open. Fingering herself in front of him. Splayed open on the bed, fingering herself. Because he tells her, you need to be wet for what comes next. And she's like, what does that mean? And he says, pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) Pleasure. He's like, <laughs> like he can only get out single words at this yeah. point because he is so horned up. So he, it, she is touching herself and then she fingers herself and pulls up some of that wetness to her clit. Mm-hmm. And he is a panther unleashed. He pounces, lunges for her. His will snaps. And then he says... Farah met his wounded gaze with absolute conviction. Mm. I want you to take me. Then God help us both. Mm -hmm. And then he is macking hard on her. And they're having this amazing kiss. And he pulls away. And she says, Dorian. And he says, don't call me that. Not here. And she's like, what do I call you then? And he says, husband. Husband, because she How did can't I not call know? him Dugan, Sabrina. How did I not know? <laughs> he cannot ask her to call him Dugan. How, how did I not know when I he don't said, know. don't call me Dorian, not here, in this wistful not time in our of marital intimacy. Bed. <laughs> so then he finishes taking off her corset. And when he does... Or, or like her chemise or something. And then under in between her corset and her chemise, he finds the plaid that Dugan gave to her. It's his it's the Mackenzie plaid. And he gave it to her and she promised him that she would never be without it when they were children. It was like his Can wedding. Can I gift just to say her. Yeah. How is that plaid recognizable after being against your skin for <laughs> 17 years? <laughs> well, it is uh, do you no know how quality? much skin oils <laughs> fuck <laughs> with you know fabric. different pigments? Yeah, I was like, there, this wouldn't even be recognized if it if it is anything more than gossamer against <laughs> her skin. <laughs> the color, there's no way the color is still there. There's no pattern left. Well, if it hasn't touched light. In forever, maybe the pigment is still there. <laughs> I guess you are not somebody who's gone down the rabbit hole of how much the human body does oh, not like human things. Body. <laughs> I know. The we'll human just, body is like, we'll I want to be naked against it. <laughs> yeah. Like, we are terrible mm-hmm. for all of the everything that you love listener it will disintegrate off of your body if you go long <laughs> enough like, so true. anyway uh well and then he she says, says please don't be mad at me 
He says, she says, are you mad? And he says, no, why would I be mad? And she says, I promised I would never be without it. And he says, well, now maybe it can represent both me and him because he's the one that binds us. Yeah. So then he makes her come by just grinding against her. He does a dry hump on her. But is it a dry hump? You know what I mean? Because like she's not. It's a this is a wet hump. This is a moist hump at the very least. She makes a comment about his. She's like, your pants are wet. And he's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. (laughs) Pleasure. (laughs) So then um, on a less lighthearted note, she does accidentally reach for him. Not yet. And he. Mm -mm. Nope. mm -hmm. Because after he dry humps her to completion, then he says, I need to find out what you taste like. I'm addicted to you. And then he goes down on her. Mm-mm. And that is That's when not she... the order. No? Does he Mm-mm. tie her up before he goes down mm-hmm. her? <gasps> yeah. So my note exactly is when, when he makes her come by grinding on her, she accidentally reaches for him and he yeah. jumps away. Then he takes her and ties her hands to the headboard with his necktie. And, and also the plaid. The plaid. <gasps> and he says, I told you not to reach for me. After tying her up, he makes his way down her and tells her not to say a single word. And then he goes down on her like a champ and finger fucks her with his gloved hands. With his leather gloves on. Why is that so hot? Why is that so hot but also so weird? Like, I don't know. I can't decide. I can't. I, all I know is that when I was reading it, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, you are. Oh, no. Go, yeah. dude. Like, yes. he's, been, he's been tweaking those nipples with his gloves. Like, that uh-huh. was one of the things is that he would wear gloves. So, wait. The other thing is that when he goes down on her, he tells her not to say anything specifically because he wouldn't be able to handle it if she rejected him. Mm-hmm. If he did something wrong. Like, if she, if she, like rejected him like changed her mind or whatever and so he's like yeah. i'm just not going to give her the opportunity to hurt my feelings like that because just... everyone hurts my feelings oh my god you sebastian <laughs> <laughs> luckily yeah. for him she has no interest in stopping this no so wow then there's some full penetration and it's hot and it's horny and she comes again he comes twice mm-hmm. and boy they are just having a good time of it well, before he I... penetrates her, he whispers in her ear, I didn't want to hurt you ever. And then he plunges in. <laughs> he says, I'm sorry. And then yes. here we go. So there's been this huge, like, cosmological shift oh, in yeah. both of their lives, you know? And she says, stay. She says, don't leave. And he says, mm-hmm. I have to go. And in his mind, it's for her safety uh, and more he, than anything else because he has nightmares. And he's also being an emo little fuck, though, about yes. the fact that he came in her twice. And now she's going to be disgusted by him and the bindings. Oh, yeah. and she's going to hate me. And this is awful. Mm-hmm. And oh, my God. And so he goes scurrying off. And then when he leaves, he tells himself that he is a bloody fool, a fool to think that he was strong. He had an evident fucking weakness Mm. one with liquid gray eyes and silver curls and god help him if she ever found out Mm -hmm. and it's like when has she not been your (laughs) weakness all in right right right. like what well i mean sabrina he just met her you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so (laughs) 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 anyway so so wait and then he leaves her naked and still tied with one hand Okay. Mm-hmm. One hand he undoes, and then he's like, she can undo the rest of it. I have to go. <laughs> he just runs. And Murdoch love- wakes up in the, like, goes to wake her up in the morning, and he's she is naked and splayed out and tied to the headboard. And he's just like, uh-huh. I don't care how much I'm loyal to him. When I see I- him again, I will wreck him. <laughs> uh-huh. And she says, Murdoch, Murdoch, he didn't do anything that I didn't want it was him fine. to do, basically. It was beautiful. <laughs> I love being tied up and railed within it. an inch of my life. <laughs> Which, that's like, they're perfect that's a mood. Each other. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. can you imagine if Ma- if Farah lived nowadays, she'd be the kinkiest motherfucker on the planet. <laughs> she'd be down for anything. Mm-hmm. Dorian would be like, "Do you want to try blank?" And she'd be like, "Let's fucking go. Let's do it. I'll try anything once." <laughs> so it's time to go. Yeah, now they're going back to London mm-hmm. because she needs to reclaim 
her earldom or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when on the train ride there, we find everything that happened with Farah during those 17 years. This is when they find out that she like stowed away on her fiance's carriage. He like goes to get her because he's been warned that she had this emotional connection to this other child. Mm-hmm. And then she was going to run away. And so she hides out until he's leaving and then just hitches a ride on the back of his carriage. Mm-hmm. And she ends up having to like go all over the country. And she thankfully is given a lot of kindness by strangers until finally she shows up at a Mackenzie's house. And they're like, you must be a relation. Come on in. You can be our other daughter now. You can help us with the deliveries. You can do all the business. And that's why she ends up being able to deliver food and stuff to Newgate Castle for those seven years. And then after that, she ends up working at Scotland Yard. As a maid. As a maid, right? And then she becomes indispensable to the first chief inspector that was there before Morley. Because he has trouble reading under low light, and so she was helping him. Yeah, And then after a while, he was like, you're not a maid anymore. You're my right-hand gal, all right? Mm -hmm. And then she just kept the job for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, my God, you were under our nose the whole time. And all all Dorian would have had to do is the one thing he swore he never would. And that was get arrested. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So they go to a modiste, Mm -hmm. get her a whole new wardrobe, She gets a little jealous because she thinks, like, maybe the modiste knows more and is, like, a little bit too familiar with Dorian Mm -hmm. than she would prefer. And he's like, well, her husband. Yeah, I've known her husband for years. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, okay, I guess I can like this lady still. Well, and then the lady brings out lingerie and she's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't need that. And Dorian's like, yeah, you do. I want one of everything. Dorian, what? And she's like, you can't spend a small fortune on under things. And he's like, well, luckily, I have a small fortune to spend on under (laughs) things. Oh, and this is highly mixed messages, because the one thing I forgot to tell you about the train ride is that he was like, are you okay? She's like, yeah, I think I'm going to take this chaise lounge instead of taking your chair. And he's like, is it? Because you can't sit. <laughs> She's like, what? No. <laughs> She's like, I then, have a corset, dude. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, I really enjoyed, you know, whatever. And um, he's like, well, you might be pregnant, so it might not. It might be a moot point. And she's like, even if I'm pregnant, like, I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. Wouldn't Why can't we, we... want to keep on? And he's, and he's like, like, no. no. I'm dirty. I'm filthy. No. I'm disgusting. I can't do it to you. I'm tainted. So... After that, at the modiste, she realizes that right before she got kidnapped, like the next morning, she was supposed to go help Gemma. Mm -hmm. And so she like she starts crying and she's like she looks at him and she says, Dorian, I need your help. And Dorian has never been more turned on in his whole life than when his lady wife Puts down her boundaries and says, I need need your help. Oh. And then we zippy zap down to the dock. Yikes. And we have the delight of meeting the sexiest motherfucker around by the name of Christopher Argent. He gets a book, right? Of fucking course he gets a book. He, I think he's the next book, if I remember right. And like, I'm just going to say, there is not a single hero in this series that I was not obsessed with. Yeah. Wait, does Murdoch get a book? No. Come on. Murdoch no. and the footman don't get a no. book. And need even a novella? Not as far as I know. Come on. Karen and Burn. I know. I mean, I guess I'm glad they got the HEA, but god damn it. Do Frank mm-hmm. and <laughs> the other person that he might end up with get a book? No. Oh. <laughs> I would have no. loved that book too. You'll understand why though, with the way that all of the people who are tied together. Like, the way that all of the heroes are tied together in this series, it makes sense. Is it that most of them were imprisoned at Newgate Castle? Because Murdoch and Frank would definitely I understand. Apply. But <laughs> they're also <laughs> sweet little baby angels. All right, fair enough. There's yeah. not a single sweet baby angel hero. 
Okay, in so any they're of all, these books. They're all baddie bad boys. They're all Sebastians. Mm. They're all broody. Even and Morley. Broken. Morley doesn't have that much to be upset Morley about. Morley is the first book in the next series, if in I remember. In the spinoff. Right. Okay. In the spinoff. Got it. Which the, ne- the the spinoff series is it's called Good Girls, and it is way fluffier. It's way okay. lighter. It's delightful. It's a romp. It's fantastic. And that it, it's it is honestly shocking. Let me say, do not go into good girls expecting Victorian rebels because like, okay. you're not like the, they're two completely different vibes. It's Love like it. walking out of a haunt, like a haunted house <laughs> into a frolicking field of pixies. Like, Love it. Love it. Okay. So they're walking down the dock in the seedy underbelly of London and Dorian is already regretting letting Farah convince him for her to come along. Mm-hmm. He's like, I should have just kidnapped all of the dock workers that I found, all of the <laughs> dock walkers that I found mm-hmm. and brought them to her uh-huh. <laughs> like, and let her choose from there. So they find Gemma and mm-hmm. she's down at the stock. This little boy was with her, but he has disappeared off into the mist. And they're like, okay, he's definitely going to go let somebody know that we're here. Yeah. But one of Gemma's my favorite quotes. to hell. Yes, it's very, very Gemma's sad. His whole I, face is messed up. It, yes, it is very sad. But you've got a great quote laid on us. Yeah, because it made me laugh because <laughs> Farrah walks up and she says, it's Miss Mrs. Blackwell now. And Gemma mm. says, as in Dorian Blackwell? If you're married <laughs> to the black art of Ben Moore, I'm the bloody Duchess of York. <laughs> and then Dorian walks up and bows <laughs> and says, your grace. <laughs> it's one of the best things I've ever read in my life. Uh-huh. And of course, Gemma's like, oh my God. Holy wow. Fuck balls. Yeah. What the fuck? And then Druthers comes out of nowhere with three of his little henchmen. Mm-hmm. And they've all got weapons. And they're all like... And they're fixing a fight no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, nothing will elevate my criminal status other than taking out the king. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and murder you right in the face right now. Mm -hmm. And Dorian's like, "Uh, I don't know about that because, you know, I'm going to... He sends the ladies behind some crates. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hide. There are three dudes plus druthers. Mm-hmm. One of the dudes is, like, big and giant and behind Druthers. And so he has two knives hidden in scabbards at the base <laughs> of his back under his coat and stuff. And so as one of the guys comes toward him and flicks his arm out with a knife. Stabby. Yeah, he does a slash at him. Dorian ducks and then comes back up, pulling out both knives, and he, like, slashes this guy in the armpit of his knife-wielding hand and then does something else. Right to totally through his throat. In, right through his throat is the one. That guy's done. It was so sexy. It was hot. Then another guy materializes, and then he sees a shock of brown hair come out of nowhere. And then the biggest guy goes stumbling backwards into the shadows behind and Dorian Druthers. And is like, ah, at the end of Argent's famous garrote. Yeah, victim of his famous Which, like, garrote. Mel, I need you. Oh, I'm excited. I, I mean, I'm going to read all of these. <laughs> I need you <laughs> to because it gets so much more convoluted and crazy. Does I it? like, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, I'm no. stoked about it. This I'm is stoked. one of my favorite historical series of all time. Oh. Like, I will scream about this series until I am dead. Love it. I love it. So anyway, anyway so then he takes out the, the, the other guy. And then Druthers is like, oh, you're not going to get past my shadow of a mountain over here. And Dorian's like, I'm sorry, what? What shadow? Your who? What mountain? Do you want to turn around and see if that guy's still there? <laughs> My favorite thing is that Murdoch is here, but there's oh, yeah. no talk about what Murdoch is doing. So I'm just imagining him like holding his pistols, like, I'm already. No. <laughs> oh, shoot you if I need to. Tag me in, coach. <laughs> Tag me in, bud. <laughs> yeah, no, I think he's like standing near the women, you know, to be like the last line of defense or something great. You know, I can see that. So then he's about to fully stab the shit out of Murdoch. Nope. Yeah. Druthers. Not Murdoch. Yeah. And he gets stopped. Druthers by pulls Farrah. out a gun. No. Okay, wait. Druthers pulls out a gun. There's a whole thing. They he ends up 
incapacitating him with his knife somehow. Druthers is on the ground. He's about to do the killing blow, I guess. And then mm-hmm. that's when Farrah Lee comes out of the mist. And she's like, no, no, you can't. And he's like, Farrah, what are you talking about? This is what I do. And she's like, no, everything else was self-defense, but this, this would be murder. He's, a, he's an unarmed man. You don't want this mark on your soul. And so instead what he does is he does incapacitate his druthers' his weapon hand. And he's like, what's another little smudge? Yeah, he like, just, he, he, like, him alive, he severs but... a tendon so that he can never, like, wield oh. a knife or a gun again. Oh, my God. It hurts so bad just to think about. I know, right? And then guess who comes walking down the dock? If it ain't Sir fucking Morley. <gasps> Chief Witness Inspector and everything. Morley is here with his entire squadron. And he's like, I finally got you now. I've got you on murder, and I've got you on smuggling, and I've got you on trafficking, maybe even, because of that dock worker that's right there. So he takes him in. He puts Murdoch and Dorian in a very small, dank cell, which, of Mm -hmm. course, they're both having big anxiety PTSD reactions to. Then he's got Gemma. By the way, listener, none of that is on page. (laughs) Yes, it's, it is. It is Farrah saying, I'll bet that they couldn't handle it. And she's right. They she's are not probably, well about it. It's never <laughs> stated on page that they're bad about it. <laughs> Whatever, man. I was with Farrah on this one. <laughs> so anyway, so then he's in the office with, with Farrah and Gemma. And he's like, explain this to me now. And he's holding her marriage certificate. I will say one thing. I don't think that Dorian was concerned about what was happening to him, as we find out later in the book. No, absolutely. He's significantly more concerned about what's happening in this office. Yeah, he's really worried about uh, Farrah being alone (laughs) with Chief Inspector Morley. Mm -hmm. Wait, a listener, we have done a huge oversight on you, and I am so sorry. Remember when I told you that Murdoch said that she is in danger, but the danger can't touch her in the castle? Turns out that Sir Woolington, uh, or whatever his name is, the old, <laughs> the old fiance, he <laughs> is now married to that alleged amnesiac. And is claiming the fortune of the earldom of Torringtown and North Bang. Is that the one? Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. And so anyway, mm-hmm. the reason that Dorian like found out that Farah is Farah is that Sir Woolingtown told everybody, no, Steward <laughs> Warrington. I don't know his name. You got the, it. I'm the, so proud of you. Was it Warrington? Yes. Oh, great job, Melody. So the Warrington guy, not Wellington, notably, has put a hit out on her, and Dorian accepted the contract in order to protect her. So that is the big danger, is that Warrington is trying to kill her dead so that she can't contest the amnesiac coming forward and claiming... The fortune, why are you looking at me like I have three heads? No, it's fine. Keep going. (laughs) Did I say something wrong? I don't... I did not realize that he accepted the contract. I knew that Argent was approached with the contract, and that's how he knew about it, but I didn't realize that he had accepted it to keep it off. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Who gives a fuck? Whimsy the shit out of it. Nobody would have done it to her. Had they accepted it and they were in his camp. Doesn't matter. That's the big, um, that's the big danger. And so she's explaining to, oh no, Chief Inspector (laughs) Morley. Mm -hmm. (laughs) There are so many names. Mm -hmm. And they're old timey names too. So many England times names. So she's explaining to Chief Inspector Morley that she was in grave danger, and the only way that really she could protect herself was to get married to the most notorious, most dangerous criminal in all of Christendom, maybe. Mm -hmm. And Chief Inspector Morley is like, I'm sorry, am I chopped liver? (laughs) Is he the most dangerous person in Christendom? (laughs) (laughs) Me thinks maybe not. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> Somebody's even more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, any, 
he would. Anyway, so he's really mad. And he's like, don't you think you could have come to me and I would have married you on the spot and protected you with the full force of Scotland Yard? And she's like, yeah, but like, also, no, it's different. And you don't excite my nethers the way that he does. Well, and he looks her looks at her and he's like, do you love him? Yeah. And she's like, no, <laughs> but I don't love you either. Right. Right. <laughs> Which exactly. like, you know what, Farah? You are correct. Good for you. So Gemma leaves the room. Well, well, importantly, yeah. when Gemma's in the room, mm-hmm. he he show he's like, what do you mean you're the town send to air? Mm-hmm. There's that woman and blah blah. And Gemma's like, huh, are you fucking kidding? That's Lucy Bog. She's a whore down on the docks. <laughs> <laughs> and Morley's like, oh. And nobody's gonna listen to the madam. Bunch of poor sex workers. And all of those dock walkers. Like, they're not gonna take your word for it. So then Gemma does leave. And I love that the re- Gemma even br- Gemma brings it up. She's like, we are all planning on blackmailing the oh, shit yeah. out of her. What for sure. Which like, you know what? Good for you, Gemma. Yeah. Get yours. Absolutely. So she is now out of the room and he's basically like, what can I do to help you now, though? Like, yeah. I have the records office that I can get information from. And she's like, well, and he's sure like, he's got that is card. that why he got arrested? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh-huh. He realizes that he got played hard. Like, real hard. Mm-hmm. So then Morley looks her dead in the face and he's like, so, Madam Regina, uh, you know, the place that Lucy Boggs came from, you should mm-hmm. ask, uh, talk to the owner. You know them intimately. And she's like, I've never met Madam Regina in my life. And he he's says, like, that's the proprietor, not the owner. <laughs> yeah. Turns out the owner is Dorian. And I'm like, Husband. of course, of course he is. In what world yeah. is he not? So they are... <laughs> Oh my god, Dorian, you are such a little drama queen. So they're in the carriage on the way home, Mm -hmm. and she's talking about, she's like, oh, aren't you happy that I got you set free so quickly from the, you know, the uh, the underground dungeon? And Dorian's like, (sighs) and just like opens the door to the carriage (laughs) and goes launching off before it even stops, and just goes storming off into the fucking mist, not to be seen again until the next day. And she's like, uh, what just happened? And Murdoch is like, he gets in a mood sometimes. It's fine. (laughs) This is regular Dorian stuff. We end up zippy zapping to the court and Mm -hmm. I'm, we're just going to cruise through this because Mm -hmm. there's still a decent amount in the book left. So they are at the court. They walk in Warrington's a real big, angry about it there's one there's this new chief justice that she recognizes and she's like oh i remember you on your 30th birthday when i was five years old you shared a slice of spice cake with me Mm -hmm. and everyone's like well how do we know that you're the real duchess or whatever town countess of ball north bang yep that one and Mm -hmm. The that one justice is like, I have a question for the two of you, and this I'll know so the mean. answer. This was so, so mean. They both walk up to him and he says, For your birthday, when I shared the spice cake, what did I give you for your birthday? I'll give you a hint. It was in a music box with a ballerina, because I know how much you love ballerinas. And Lucy Boggs is like, Oh, well, it was it was a trinket, maybe a necklace. I'm so sorry. Maybe I, a bracelet. I, I, I got hit in the head. I can't really remember. Hard. And it was just so foggy as a five year old. And meanwhile, Farah is having a full on meltdown because she's like, I could answer anything but this. She's like, tears are I have rolling no down idea. her face. I have no idea what was in that thing. And I don't remember says, getting it. She says, I'm so sorry. I don't remember this. And also, I was the tomboy. My sister is the one who loved ballerinas. And I was more into, and he says, Pegasus. Pegasus. It was a trick question. The reason I shared my spice what? cake with you is because I didn't get a? you a present that year. <laughs> Dick. That's so mean. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? So mean. But it worked out. And so he's like, we're going to get this all figured out. And then it's all taken care of. Warrington gets arrested because he can't keep his trap shut. Mm -hmm. And now he's arrested specifically because of the fact that he tried to bribe or pay Argent and McTavish Mm -hmm. to kill her. 
Yeah. Which, like, McTavish ain't taking that, even without Dorian in the picture. No. And they fight, like, one of the Argent, Argent would. Just to be clear. Not her. Not in this situation, but he... But he would otherwise, sure. But, like, not... he's such an assassin. Not... He's not going to go against Dorian's love, you know what I mean? He's got loyalty, I'm sure of it. Mm. Mm. Anyway, so... (laughs) Two things that we find out, they bring in that nur- that nurse, that sister maggot to mm-hmm. like... And now she's mother superior. Yeah, of course she is. Of course she is. And she admits to forging the documents and all that kind of thing. But then the other thing we find out is that if you're not blue-blooded already, you cannot claim any of the benefits of being... A countess's husband. So you can be a steward of of the land that they own. You get access to all the purse strings. You get all of that. But you don't get a seat in parliament. You don't get whatever, you know, benefits to like the clubs or whatever that you would get if you were like a real (laughs) earl. And then she thought he was doing this the whole time because he wanted to be an earl and like and he told it's her because that. That's what he said. Yeah, he was like, I wanna I wanna have some entitled benefits or whatever. She finds out he doesn't even get that, and so he's done all of this just to return her <laughs> legacy to her. So we do my cheeks hurt from smiling so much. I know. So we zippy zap and Dorian is like doing that brooding thing where he's looking out a window. He has a hand up on it while he's mm. looking broodingly out into the out into the fields. It's probably and raining even. He's feeling so low. He's like, mm. what do I do from here? Where do I go from here? What do I conquer? Mm-hmm. What do I, what power can I get? Because like there's nothing I can do. I've hit the I've hit the peak and I've never felt so low i'm just so i'm just so successful and they haven't gotten the ability to send me to space yet so she ends up coming into the solarium behind him Mm -hmm. and she's like can we celebrate this was amazing and Mm -hmm. he's like go take care of your land and she's like but what and he's like i'm not coming with you go and she's yeah. like trying to apologize. She's like, "What have I done? I'm so sorry." And then she gra- <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> she grabs him by the arm, and he spins around and grabs her wrist. Oh my god! And d- without gloves on, yeah. And he's like, "How many times do I have to tell you not to reach for me?" And then he realizes that the first time he touched her skin to skin. Was with violence. Mm. Oh God! This is just reiterating, re, re, reinforcing. Yeah, all of these ideas that he's not good enough for her, and he's yeah, dirty and, and he's awful and terrible. Her. And then he looks her in the face, and he's like, "Did you touch Morley in that room?" And she's oh my like, "God, no! She's like, what? I, I touched his face, and I gave him a hug, but like nothing more than that." And he's like, "You're mine." And he's just. <laughs> Most she's like, jealous yeah, son of a bitch. I am. That's what I've been trying uh-huh. to do right now. And then, and then he loses it and he kisses the hell out of her. And oh, then yeah. he fucking grabs a rope out of nowhere uh-huh. and ties up her wrist and then hangs her by the window and then mm-hmm. pulls her dress up and rails her senseless. And she is into it. He bent over her, the width of his shoulders engulfing the slimness of hers. I'm like this all the bloody time around you. I hate it. Do you know mm. that? I have no control. I just want to fuck and fuck and fuck until nothing <laughs> matters anymore. Until we can no longer move our limbs or lift our heads to mm-hmm. eat. He flexed his still hard cock inside of her. This is supposed to go away after I come, but it doesn't. <gasps> Not with you, wife. Mm-hmm. My passion is this insatiable perversion. <laughs> sir by the way i was thinking about it while i was highlighting these quotes yeah mm -hmm. what was the book that i was so i couldn't even read i was too a twitter to read the scene the sex scene what was that again just for the cameras was it just for the cameras? Okay. Uh-huh. Where I was like, I can't say this out loud. Yeah. Okay. It just, it made me laugh because when I was highlighting this, I was like, yeah, I'll have no problem saying that Yeah, this is no problem. Podcast. Yeah. What? <laughs> okay. Well, and then he's growling in her ear and he says, fairy, my fairy. And then she freezes. And then she says, Dugan? Dugan? 
and he freaks out. He he fucking vanishes and now she is half naked, tied to the window, <laughs> and Murdoch comes in again because like, this man is incapable of not walking in on her tied up in sexual well, positions. Because, let's be clear, when we say vanishes, she means that that Farah can hear him destroying the house all the way out in time. <laughs> movie, little bitch. <laughs> He's just like clang, clash, bra. <laughs> and, and so like, Murdoch what comes in being happening? like, "Are you okay?" And he's like, "He did this to you again." And she's like, "Murdoch, mm-hmm. Murdoch, don't worry about it. I liked it again. Let me go. Let me go." And then she says, "Did you know uh-huh. that it's Dugan?" And Murdoch was like, "What? No, what? What?" <laughs> Like, well, no. So what happens is sh- sh- he says, I'm never going to forgive him. And she's like, uh, you're going to forgive him the same way I'm going to forgive you. That's the Did one. you know? And he's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. 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 no, I would never. And then she's like, where'd he go? And he's like, I don't think you're going to have a problem finding that. <laughs> yeah, just follow the, the destruction. And she says, don't follow me. She's so excited. She's going to go get her Dugan. She finds him out by a stone wall in the rain, just with his head hung between his knees and his hands. And she says, why are you crying? It's the first words she ever said to him. Mm -hmm. And he says, go away. Go away. (laughs) I can't with you. (laughs) Then shit goes from great Banana sideways. Yeah. Yeah. So she is talking to him and she's like, Dugan, talk to me. And then he says to her, the boy you knew as Dugan McKenzie is deceased. He died in Newgate prison too many times. And she says, is there nothing left of him? And he says, only the way he remembers you. Mm. Oh. And he's, like, playing with her curls the way that Dugan always did. Yeah, it's and the first he's time he's ba- allowed himself to do that. Well, then they have this really beautiful kiss, and he is embracing her, and she's embracing him. Should we tell listener what happened really quickly? Oh, God. In Newgate Castle? Okay, so basically, <laughs> what happened was Dugan had... So, this orphanage was well known for being full of bastard children of gentry oh are you talking about how he died yeah okay get two seconds that's the next thing oh that's the next thing okay yeah so they end up having this really beautiful kiss and he's embracing her and she's embracing him and she says like a fucking nitwit she says i love you dugan and Mm -hmm. he pulls away from her and he says my name is dorian blackwell and i will be him until the day that i die And then he tells her the story of what happened and how Dugan's father paid to have him killed. Yeah, Dugan wrote to his father for help. And instead, his father was like, I'm not going to let this be a stain on my family name. And so he paid three of the guards to kill his son in the prison. And this was well into their friendship and well into, like, the boys all being friends together. And they were working on some sort of scheme. And Frank used to be, like, a brilliant a brilliant mathematician and code breaker. And he was just, like, so, 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 so smart. And so one night, he and Dorian were working on a cipher of some sort or something like that. Yeah. And so because of that, Dugan and Dorian switched rooms. And up until this point, they had been called the Black Heart Brothers because they were they were tough to tell apart, especially when they were constantly covered in soot and grime and grossness to protect their skin from the harsh rays of the sun while they were like building the it's railroad fine. during the day. Just make it more depressing. It's fine. I know. And so the three guards go into Dugan and Frank's room and proceed to beat both children. One to death and one to very, 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 very near death and, you know, debilitating results for the rest of his life. And Dugan then decided with the rest of the boys that he would take Dorian's name and Dorian's sentence because Dorian was going to get out pretty soon. Regardless, his sentence was almost up. He wasn't in there for murder. He was in there for like robbery. Stealing bread. Yeah. 
So that's when Dugan became Dorian. And, oh, it's just like tragic and terrible. Mm-hmm. And and poor Frank. Frank's just been yeah. gaslit since <laughs> justice he was, for Frank. Justice for Frank. Frank gets some justice. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, he does. So then Dorian, he says, I am Dorian Blackwell. I will always be Dorian Blackwell. He lives on in me. And she yeah. says, then I'll love you as Dorian Blackwell. Yeah. For I married him as well. And then he... Gets a stick up his butt. What a dumbass. And he says, don't love me because I'm not going to be able to love you in return. And she says, it's too late. I already gave you my love. Yeah. And he's like, you gave it to Dugan. Nope. And she's like, yeah, but guess what? Dorian had started to steal it from me. And he's like, take it back. Yeah. And he's like, if, I, if you give me your heart, I'm going to corrupt it. It's going to be poisoned. It's gonna, I'm going to blacken it until you hate me as much as you hate yourself for giving it to me. Every part of my life has been bleak, brutal, and bloody, except you. I'll not add your ruin to my many sins. And then he totally calls her out because he's like, you think that your love is going to fix me? because that's exactly what she was thinking too and she knew it she's like fuck and like obviously we know that her love is gonna fix him (laughs) (laughs) but like he's like he's being a big old dick about it he's like he's being terrible oh god and he says i am a bad man and you just make me worse Yikes. Because there is no better man under this. In fact, with you here, I'm much worse. I lose control around you, Farah. You make me blind. The thought of touching you dissolves me into madness. The thought of another man touching you? Mm. He grabbed her wrists and held the raw skin in front of her eyes. Look what I've done. What I forced oh you to do upstairs. And she's like, you didn't force me. I wanted it. I enjoyed and he's like, it. Well, and then he's like, I would have. And she's like, you can't have. Yeah. And she's like, what the fuck, dude? I'm never going to deny you. I want you. Every piece of you. All of these dark, bad, broken parts. Yes, I want you. I love you. I am yours. And you're mine. Yeah. And then he says, "Uh, well, consider this done. And she's like, well, you promised me a child, though. Mm-hmm. And he says, consider this the first of many times that I'll disappoint you. Mm. And she said, but you said that you always keep your promises. And he said, I was wrong to say that. And she said, why? And then he said, as I said before, I do not suffer fools. Mm. And you're a fool for loving me. Oof. Ugh, and then I, as I, he goes stomping off back towards the building, mm-hmm. she's like, what was even the point of marrying me? Why did you bind my life to yours if you're going to treat me like this? Yeah. And he says, or she says, what's the bloody point? And uh-huh. he says, the point is, I'm a bastard in every sense of the word. Yikes. Boom. Mic drop. That's it. She goes off to her family home. Her newly remembered and and reclaimed towns and estate or whatever, she takes all of his men. (laughs) All of his men. Murdoch goes. That footman goes. Frank goes. Frank goes. Gemma's Gemma there. Goes. Tallow goes. Her the footman. Yeah. Slash butler. And oh and gosh. Two months go by. Mm-hmm. Two of them. There is one moment that I really thought captured something very, very real. Mm-hmm. And that was, you know, we spoke about how he was the victim as a child to the R word many Mm -hmm. times over in prison. And one of the reasons that he hasn't wanted to touch her after being able to consummate the marriage is because he sees himself as like dirty and tainted and all of the things that victims of sexual assault often feel. Yeah. And... I don't know. I just thought it was very poignant. And yeah, mm. it was very real. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And anyway, what frankly, were you going to hard say? to read. Yes. A couple of and quite a few. Yeah, places. Yeah. So she ends up she's talking to Murdoch 
And she says, well, I've been given another chance at happiness and I refuse to throw it away. Mm -hmm. I am going to take back that promise and I am moving forward with my life and I'm going to write Dorian a letter. Yeah. By the way. She has been having these on and off moments where she's like, I'm taking back my joy. I'm taking back my life. And yeah. this has galvanized Murdoch into confessing to Tallow mm. his feelings. Yeah. And now Tallow and Murdoch are together forever. And it's really cute because we find out before she makes this proclamation that like for the past two months, she has been watching and being very happy for Murdoch and Tallow because before he even told her anything, she noticed like the small touches here and there and, you know, like the just like touching each other on the shoulder or something as they passed and looks between them and all this stuff. And then she walks into the kitchen and Frank... <gasps> has his arms around Gemma's waist from behind and is looking over her shoulder as she works on some sort of pastry dough or something. And in that and she's moment, like, my heart uh, grew heart three times. <laughs> exploded everywhere. Conf there was heart confetti all around me in the garden. It was a disaster. And she's being like, I'm not good at this. I'm no good at this. And he's just standing over her going, no, you are good at this. You're doing a great job. And she says that, like, their relationship is so perfect and buoying to everyone. But specifically, like, for Gemma, it's because Frank allows her to make a lot of the decisions. And what Gemma needs in her life is control over her own mm -hmm. fate. And he's there and, to support her. And he is just steadfast and sweet <sighs> and worshipful. And she treats him just as well because, you know, it's just like such a mutually beneficial and it's so sweet. wonderful relationship. I, ah. would, I would kill for those novellas. I mean, <laughs> I, would, I, would. I would die for those novellas. <laughs> I would this not point. because I need to be alive for it to be able to read them. You know, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I would have to pay my debt after I read them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So then she does decide. She writes him a letter. <gasps> and we don't we don't know what that oh, letter yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> and so we zippy zap to Dorian. He's getting drunk as a skunk with He's Arjun. A wreck. He has not been eating. He's not been sleeping. <laughs> he's just, boy, he's looking rough. Argent has told him that Warrington was arrested, but then released on his own recognizance. But then they found him dead. Yes. Then they and found so his body like, awesome. in the tent. We don't need to worry about him. And then mm -hmm. Dorian gets a letter. Oh, boy. And he opens that letter. And let me tell you what that letter says. <laughs> Dorian, I've given our situation a great deal of consideration and have decided to subsequently release you from our, your promise. My intention to raise a family still remains. As such, I will be accepting another candidate to fulfill the required vocation until my objective has been attained. It is my sincere hope that this letter finds you well and that you are able to find peace. Yours, Lady Farrah Lee Blackwell, mm. Countess Northwalk. <laughs> And he is my head. He, he goes from zero to get my coat and my horse. I'm going to ride through the night. He gets on his thoroughbred and he goes. Well, then we zippy zap back and like shit goes sideways. Murdoch goes in to like get her, you know, bring her tea or whatever she needs. No. At night. No. So she's in lingerie. And she's in front of a mirror sure. yeah. and she's like admiring how it looks. And she's thinking all about how much she wishes that Dorian was here to witness it and like love her at it. And she's talking and about how things. hard it's going to be to let another man into her bed, even though she has to because she wants a family. Gosh, darn it. And then she sees a shadow behind that's, her. That's the one thing. And she's like, Dorian. <laughs> and now all of a sudden Warrington pops up and he's like, you still think that that fool is going to be here for you? You strumpet. And, and he's got lesions all over his face. Oh boy. He's looking rough. He's obviously off his rocker a bit. Yeah. He is fully syphilitic, my friends. That's the one. So they, he's like, all right, time to go. And Murdoch is outside of her door to bring her tea. That's the one. And she's like, I've already turned in. 
and he says, like, I have news from Argent about Dorian, and she's like, it doesn't matter, and she says I don't it want in a to kind know of way that she's, Dorian. that she's yeah. hoping, says, okay. hey, we have some problems, and then all of a sudden, Murdoch comes through that door like a f- angry rhinoceros. He, he it blows in. that bitch right off those hinges. That's the one. And, and then he gets shot. And then, <laughs> straight up to shoot him immediately. And then pushes so, her through her own wardrobe. Uh-huh. He lion the witch in the wardrobes her down into the bowels of that castle. Can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> I used to have nightmares well, oh, about no. finding out that Not there were you. secret passageways <laughs> in places that I live. <laughs> Because my biggest terror is that there would be somebody hiding and living in the walls. <laughs> so, like, this book, another one that immediately pops into mind because y'all did it on HBs before I joined you as co-host. And Haley did it in our very first episode of TBR is with that, that. That Scottish with the, one with, with the where he's got and the, arrows? It's the one with the painting of him naked, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he just comes <laughs> busting out of that fucking mm-hmm. wall. Mm-hmm. I, every time I read any book like that, I, it, I, <laughs> I rationally know it that in my something. tiny house, it is impossible for somebody to be living in my walls or under my house, but that's still not enough. Hey, Sabrina, it's really good that you don't watch TV because there is a TV show all about what's called Froggers. And Froggers <laughs> are actual people in the real world who end, <laughs> who end up like living in people's walls or attics or basements. <laughs> and then there are crime shows about that. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> That's a real thing. Don't Google it, maybe. <laughs> Sabrina's not well. <laughs> I, so, like, I've gone down this rabbit hole more than once, you know? About froggers? No, I didn't know that term. I hate that there's a term. I, ho- I hate that it's so common that there's a term for it. I really, like... With every yeah, fiber yeah. of my no, being, I, I hear that. Yeah. feel that. But I have gone down that rabbit hole a couple of times where, like, social media videos, right, where they're, like, they set up a camera because food went missing, yeah. and then you see somebody just cr- crawl out of their attic <laughs> and go dig around in their pantry. <laughs> One of the things that made me happiest about the house that I have moved into. Yeah. There's no attic? Literally there is an attic, but it is too small. Like, I would know. There's sure. no way for you to get in the attic and out of the attic without mm-hmm. me being aware of it. So, there's a TV show? Froggers? Yeah, I think it's P-H-R-O-G-G-E-R-S. Froggers. You realize that I don't have the self-control necessary. <laughs> not to Google? Not to... <laughs> wo- <laughs> What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that sure? <laughs> the first thing I know that we're in the middle of recording. The first thing that came up when I searched this was that, and that's not the most terrifying picture Wait, I I've ever see- seen Ooh. in my life. <laughs> It's terrifying. Oh my god. I hate god. that. Oh, it's frogging. I'm sorry, frogging. All I know is that that was the worst thing I could have seen. I hate that. In my whole life. I hate anyway, that so much. So, uh, turns out Warrington has been frogging. He's, he's a frogger. God, this is awful. Why? Ugh, I have chills. Oh, I'm, I'm itching now for no reason. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like itchy now. So he takes her down there. She learns the story about how she was promised to Warrington because 
he cozied up to her dad and became and, indispensable uh, to him. Yeah, and like he convinced her dad that he would like love her even more than he and loved cherish him her. and the estate and murder bird blah. And it was all a ruse. It was all a lie. It was all a con. Yeah. And then unsurprisingly, we find out that Warrington got uh, syphilis from the woman that he married, Lucy Boggs. Lucy Boggs. Yeah. Thank you, Lucy Boggs. Thank you for your service. And luckily for Farrah, uh, his dick don't work no more. Yep. Um, The syphilis has already gotten to it. But unlucky for Farrah, he has decided that he is going to take her with him into this cold, dark grave. And they're going to die down here together. Yeah, it turns out his trigger finger still works. So that's great. Yeah, love that. So he's about to shoot her. She like... Then we zippy zap. Yeah, we zippy. There's like a bang, bang, and then it's a zippy zap. So Blackwell gets to the house, and everybody's a flutter. And he got there just in time. He got there minutes after all of this happened. Yeah. And he's like, where's my wife? And he goes up and finds Murdoch. Murdoch's like, tis a flesh wound. Murdoch's like, no way that he could have gotten past me because, my God, I wish I had passed out. That would be so much better than what right? I'm dealing with right now. And Dorian he just starts, starts losing his brain. breaking in the fucking walls until he yes. demolishes that wardrobe and finds the Heidi passage. Well, because he hears that bang, bang, and yeah. he's like, they're in the walls. Yes. Which is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he descends into that Frogger land. And when he gets down there, and then we zip his app. Yeah, we zip his app back. She has like moved his arm out of the way so that he can't hit her. And she gets the gun. And uh, does she shoot him right now? So she gets the gun and he stands up and she has the gun and he starts yeah. coming towards her. And she's mm-hmm. like, I don't want to have to do this. And then he keeps coming towards her and then she shoots him in the sternum. That's the one. Yeah. And then Dorian, like the b- gets there, Dark Knight. Comes yes. fluttering in with his cape and lands yeah. in the middle of them. Yeah. And he's like, give me the gun, Farrah. I don't want and this she's like, smudge on no. your soul. Well, she's like, no, it's f- don't take the gun. He's already going to die. And then Dorian just grabs the gun from her and double taps him in the face. Yeah. And then snuggles her up and starts making out with her against that wall. Yeah. And then he says, oh, lady wife. You knew what you were doing with that letter. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, you think I would let any other man have you or whatever? I'm here to put 18 babies in that belly if I need to. And she's Mm -hmm. like, really? And then they're together forever. And Murdoch is fine. He was Mm -hmm. only grazed in the side. It was, in fact, a flesh wound. And everybody's together forever, and it's the best. Well, and most importantly, when they yes. get up there, uh-huh. she's like, let me touch you. Oh, and yeah. he's like, oh, God, I don't know if I can. And she's like, let me give you pleasure the way you gave me pleasure. And then yeah. she gets that shirt off, and yeah. she is all horned up for that sexy, sexy body. And he's uh-huh. like... Because he didn't want it, her to see his body. He has, he has scars everywhere. Yes. And she's like, I don't care about your scars. I love you. They're part of it, you. I don't, she doesn't care I about the you. scars. She's just touching on all that muscle moving mm. around underneath that skin. And then she does give him a blowjob. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And he scoops her up. And it's just, it's really beautiful. It is. And they're together forever. And it's the best. The end. And it's wonderful. All right, Sabrina, what is your lady love? Well, I can tell you it's not frogging. (laughs) I know what my lady love is. Yesterday, I asked some friends if we could just do some parallel play where we play video games at the same time on chat and don't actually really talk a whole lot. And my lady love is turning that shit upside down and invoking one of my friend's special interests. And then I just sat there enthralled. For three Aww. hours listening to them talk about their special interests. I love that. And it that. was incredible. So that's my lady love. When you don't want to be alone, but you don't have anyone in person that you can hang out with, just ha- set up a hang where yeah. you just, you don't have to be doing anything with that person. It's just doing things at the same time with yeah. the occasional comment about miscellaneous, weird, random things. I love it. I love it. What's your lady love? Oh, boy. I don't know how to put this into a lady love, but I'm going to try. Is it plant thievery? 
No, <laughs> I mean, that is always a lady love. Okay. I'm a lady love. If you see a yarrow that you don't have, <laughs> get yourself some of that yarrow. Get, get you that yarrow. Yeah. Maybe that should be my lady love. No, I'm going to try to do a, a realer <laughs> lady love. Uh, I have not pulled back the curtain in a little bit, and I don't really even know. I'm having a hard time processing it myself at the moment, but... I just am still not super okay on the mental health front. And we've talked about it at length together, you and I. And I think that's part of the lady love, you know, is like, I know that I'm really, really lucky to have the support that I do, especially Mm -hmm. since when my mental health goes south the first thing i do is hermit you know Mm -hmm. and some really incredible friends have reached out and been like hey i'm checking in and i've had to be like hi i'm hermiting hard and i'm trying not to and i'm also trying not to beat myself up about it and like it's a whole thing right but the other night i told you about this briefly the other night for the first time in a while I woke up just sobbing my head off (laughs) Mm -hmm. and Michael woke me up to be like, hey, it's a dream. Are you okay? Are you okay? And I just like couldn't stop crying in the middle of the night. I was like, okay, I have to pee. (laughs) So I went to go pee. I can't believe you had fluids left to pee. I know, right? I thank you. Well, I managed to pee and sob at the same time. <laughs> Gotta have it coming out both ends. <laughs> On that <You> toilet. <laughs> Still not even sure what I was crying about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went <laughs> no, back to... Boy, do I understand you, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yahoo! <laughs> Then I went back to bed. Love finding things in common with your besties. It's fine. (laughs) Everything's fine. It's great. We're great over here at HBHQ. (laughs) Everything's Um, fine. Things are great. (laughs) No, and so I went back to bed, and Michael was just like, you know, it's okay. Are you all right? Do you want to talk about it? And I was like, no. Go to bed. (laughs) And he was like, no, it's lemur time. (laughs) And I was like, what? <laughs> and so he like spoons me up real good and he's like, no, it's lemur time. And I very earnestly, I was just like, what's lemur time? He's like, I'm a lemur and I've got this sobbing branch. <laughs> and I'm just going to find some fruit to eat. <laughs> and just like ridiculous shit <laughs> was coming out of his mouth. And... I don't I don't know what the lady love is in it. But there is one. finding joy when it's ho- like things are bad. I think. Yeah. Cuz like you and I did that on the phone the other day too. You know, or it's that was just a talk like we had. Yeah, we we <laughs> we worked we were through just sad some and shit on both of our ends and then we ended up cracking up about something else. I think it was my mm-hmm. plant thievery or it some was. other <laughs> told you point blank i was like mel i am going to bring this, this like this is banter this is like, like tell me about your plant uh-huh. thievery life on pod uh-huh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then i sent you pictures of my son's study oh that my I had God. Done. listener it is i had i was flabbergasted frankly <laughs> Anyway, maybe that'll be banter for another day. Yeah, I think it's just like trying to find, not even trying, just like allowing no. yourself to find the light and the humor and like whatever I you can, can definitely co-sign grasp, <laughs> you that know? lady love. Like finding the light, li- finding the light in the darkness. Your fairy yeah. in the Dorian, you know. Yes, the fairy in the Dorian. <laughs> 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 Oof. All right. Okay. So keep being a badass. And love yourself as much as you love starting a North New Jersey plant stealing (laughs) ring of just all your tricksiest gardeners. Okay. (laughs) 
getting All together right. and trading native plants that they have pilfered. All right? I, you what... know what? <laughs> love yourself as much as that. Love yourself as much as you love having people list walls. Yes. Just the emptiest walls. Mm-hmm. You know? Boy, yeah. the emptiest walls. Yeah. The kind of wall where you don't have to tell yourself that that's a mouse making that sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love yourself as much as you love looking forward to reading Argent's book. Oh, my God. Okay. That dark villainous <laughs> hero. <laughs> Heaving Bosoms is produced by us, Melody Carlisle and Sabrina Bradley. Editing is done by Melody Carlisle. Our theme music is by the incredible singer-songwriter Brittany Fonts, and our art is by ultra-talented author Kate Pryor. If you like our show, remember to follow us on your favorite podcast app, rate us five stars, leave a nice review, and of course, tell all your friends about us, even if they don't read romance. If you want to get in touch, you can email us at heavingbosomspodcast at gmail.com. If you want more of us, visit patreon.com slash heavingbosomspodcast. You can also find us on Instagram at heavingbosoms, on TikTok at heaving underscore bosoms, and in our Facebook group, the Heaving Bosoms Geriatric Friendship Cult. Head over to our website to sign up for our newsletter, get our Reading Embrace printable, and check out my audiobooks at heavingbosoms.com. All right, we'll be back next week with more Swoons and Snark. See you then. Bye.